there was a pretty big trend upward in whale activity and I'm actually refreshing to show the past week now and there's just been a, a, a huge incline over the past five days uh, just since October 12th there's been an increase of 8,100, 8,124 approximate Bitcoin accumulated by mm. wallets that hold at least 10 BTC. That's the sharks and the whales combined. Welcome into the Thinking Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Edward, and I have with me Brian from Santiment. And as we all know, we're going to do a deep dive into the metrics as to what's happening with Bitcoin and all coins in the crypto market. Brian, great to see you. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. Good week for crypto and a good day so far, too. We saw a uh, climb to above 68, nearing 69 now. So the narrative has changed to like, will 70K happen before the end of the year to will it happen in the next week? Uh, I think the bullishness has really started to come out of the woodwork here. Yeah, for sure, Brian. And, you know, in our last episode, we were talking about if the the market psychology, if the herd all believes one thing, usually the opposite happens. An example, September, everybody thought it's going to be bloody. It ended up being a decent month. And then they thought October is coming in October. <laughs> it October did not start off well. Uh, but to your point, Bitcoin is starting to move and we'll see what happens next. Yeah, a month is a lot longer than people think, right? The first half, everyone's like, all right, October should be happening anytime. By the second week, they were kind of let down and deflated and said, all right, I guess it was all a myth. And here we are in the midst of the third week of October, and suddenly things are looking very up. So all of the naysayers toward October are now back on the train. <laughs> For sure. Um, so let's look at some Bitcoin metrics and uh, what's happening around sentiment, what are people saying and so forth. Yeah, it's been kind of polarized throughout the month. And even now, uh, there's not nearly as much bullishness as you may think. Just to start out, <coughs> excuse me, you can see how many uh, coins are in the green over the past week. It's just been uh, a sea of growth for crypto, which has been a nice sight to behold for almost all of you watching this video who are rooting for crypto to go up and not down. Uh, Dogecoin being a notable gainer up about 25%. Um, many meme coins, you know, we see Bonk over here up double digits as well. Mm. Um, I know that Whiff and Floki and a few others have made some serious traction as well. Aptos has stood out. Uh, but yeah, the big story has been Dogecoin and, uh, even lately, Litecoin's had some crazy network activity too. So lots of different fireworks going off in different corners of crypto right now, but it's all being led by Bitcoin, which is up a solid 11%, currently sitting at about 68.9K at the time of this call. So um, exciting times and social volume, as you would expect, is across the board. This is just the overall amount of discussions toward each of these assets over the past week compared to the week prior. So a 17% rise in overall Bitcoin discussion means people are definitely taking notice. Mm. And from a accumulation standpoint, uh, what's the whale activity look like and also supply and exchanges? Yeah, so on the whale side of things, um, it's looking really strong. So really starting about one month ago, um, I think we even touched on it as it was happening over the last couple of weeks, there was a pretty big trend upward in whale activity. And I'm actually refreshing to show the past week now. And there's just been a, a, a huge incline over the past five days. Uh, just since October 12th, there's been an increase of 8,124 8, approximate Bitcoin accumulated by mm. wallets that hold at least 10 BTC. That's the sharks and the whales combined. But you get the idea. When they go up together, prices tend to follow. And it's really only when things go flat like this or actually go down that we have things to worry about. Like that's a profit take right here in late May, early June. You can mm. see what happened to the price falling off a cliff shortly after. So as long as this is going up, it's a pretty strong sign. Nothing's a guarantee, but it is generally a very good bullish signal for crypto as long as the 10 plus BTC wallets keep hoarding away coins. 
Yeah, great point. And then over the past three days, I saw reports of a massive inflows into BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF, I think in total over 700 million, if I'm not mistaken. So seeing significant accumulation. Yeah, let me check that out in my sea of tabs here. So total ETF volume. Um, this was a notable day. Uh, back on Tuesday, uh, we saw over $3 billion in volume across ETFs. Uh, at least the seven largest ETFs for mm. just the second time over the past two and a half months or so. So there, there definitely was a sign here that a lot of money was suddenly churning in and out, more in, by the way, than out on the ETF side of things. And you mentioned BlackRock. Check out that volume here, almost mm. two, two billion. So two thirds of that total volume is coming from, from BlackRock. So those rumors are definitely true. And this was the highest volume it saw since the crash back on August 4th. Um, and moving down a little further, I think we have some data on the actual inflow and outflow. Yeah, so here is BlackRock's or IBIT, the ETF's ticker. In terms of inflow and outflow, I'll full screen it here. You can see there's there was some major inflow beginning in late September. And even though it's been on the decline and kind of bouncing back and forth, I'm liking the look of a lot more money continuing to move in over the past three to four months uh, for BlackRock's ETF. And this is how a lot of the ETFs look outside of GPTC, the, the OG uh, high fee ETF that most people are jumping out of. Mm. Yeah, it's incredible. I, I wonder if these investors sense what's on the horizon with global liquidity going up, election uncertainty will be over soon. Uh, you know, typically there's some level of seasonality, right, going into Q4. That's historically has been a good performing quarter. So they, they may totally. be sensing these things. Yeah. And, and you talked about seasonality. I'll check on that point, too, because I want to see how the Trump and Biden, I'm sorry, Trump and Kamala mentions look right now. Um, and prior to that, we can look at how October has trended up and down, right? You can see mm -hmm. how much hype there was right here, smack dab on October 1st. So everyone's like, all right, guess what, guys? Best month of the year for crypto. It's time to party. <laughs> and then we see this collapse yeah. as the October mentions are getting spammed. We get some volatility another collapse as the traction starts to make an attempt to rise in October hype again, falls all the way down here. <laughs> People aren't mentioning at all. And then we get a little more mention as it continues rising. But I think overall, this is a great sign that uh, the crowd kind of started to scoff at the idea of October by the mm -hmm. time the second uh, and especially third week started here in the month and uh, markets have kind of roared ever since on the backs of that whale accumul accumulation we just saw. Yeah, it's it's funny, the, the market psychology principles play out, man, the herd, you don't follow the herd, right? Exactly, I always try to be a contrarian, especially when you see the crowd really starting to get unanimous and on this, even the bears and the bulls are kind of agreeing on one side of the fence, that's the time for you to really strike here. Mm. So. Um, you mentioned Kamala. I'll just do this. We'll say Kamala. Any mention of Kamala or Harris? And then we'll do Donald or Trump. Those, all four of those words are unique enough where they're almost exclusive enough to be mentioned related to the candidates and not overlapping with other subjects. So it's perfect. And if we just zoom in here, we'll do the last month. So a lot more Kamala mentions lately. Let's put them on a shared axis too. Kamala is here in blue, and we started to see a lot of mentions back here on Monday, a little more here, but Trump is usually the bigger bullish signal because he tends, he, at least from what the crowd believes right now, and I'm mm -hmm. not going to debate whether it's true or not, they believe he's the more pro-crypto, uh, better beneficiary for crypto candidate, therefore people tend to get more bullish when positive positive news comes out about him. And both have really started to increase in social media mentions, more so Donald Trump for sure. Uh, but Kamala, these are some of the biggest spikes I've seen. So 
I guess, long story short, the takeaway is that as we get closer and closer to the election, which is now, I think, just under three weeks away, um, we're just going to see more and more hype related to, the, related to these candidates. And I wouldn't be surprised if like one big snafu from one of them uh, causes volatility. I would imagine something negative toward Kamala that happens would be good for crypto's price for the short term and bad if it happened to Trump. So we'll see how that plays out. But that seems to be the way crypto's community perceives these two candidates and how the markets should go from news about them. Oh, for sure. I've seen that firsthand. Um, given that you know Trump has spoken about crypto more, uh, there has been some uh, small statements from Kamala Harris about crypto, but not enough to sway i think crypto voters i think they <laughs> many of them have their minds made up that trump is the pro crypto candidate and he would be better for the markets and the industry so uh, yeah it's pretty accurate yep totally it, it's tough to say and maybe one of one or both of them will make one final statement about their stance on crypt, crypto before the uh the votes come in but uh that's really where the fireworks happen if they if they hone in on crypto and actually address how they plan to uh it, you know, strategize around policies for crypto going forward for the next four years. Mm. Um, let's jump back to uh, Bitcoin supply and exchanges. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what, what are we seeing there? Is it continuing to decline? Yeah. So on the supply and exchange end, this is one of my uh, templates here that looks at not just Bitcoin, but also the Tether and USD coin supply and exchanges. Starting with Bitcoin, it's looking very good. Uh, you want to be rooting for Bitcoin to continue moving off of exchanges uh, because theoretically that means there's less sell pressure and uh, fear of a, a, a giant sell off from a whale or a group of whales. Hmm. So we've seen just a consist consistent decline. It's currently sitting at about 9.3% of Bitcoin on exchanges where uh, Going back to April 30th, just under six months ago, it was sitting at about 10.2%. If we go back even further, you can see how how far we've come down. It's wow. uh, going back here to November, 12.16%, <clears throat> and now at 9.31. So you're talking about almost a quarter of the Bitcoin that was on exchanges back in November is now in cold wallets or at least away from known exchange wallets. Wow. Okay. That's a good sign. And, yeah. uh, I guess, you know, as soon as we start hitting new highs, this number or this metric may start to move up, right? Where profit takers are going to start moving some coins back on the exchanges and so forth. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So it's definitely a good sign there, especially when combined with the fact that tether um, in terms of top exchange address holdings, they're <laughs> continuing to go way up. So this is actually just highlighting the top 10 largest exchange addresses and how much Tether they hold collectively. Wow. And it's up to $24.4 billion worth after being about a year ago at $14.45 billion. So just almost exactly $10 billion more of Tether sits among the top 10 exchange addresses now so one could surmise that th some of this liquidity will go into buying bitcoin and alts and so forth right exactly more ex more exchange supply of stable coins is the opposite effect of bitcoin exchange supply because it means there's more dry powder available from traders to inject into crypto based on what their target prices are, what their strategies are, but it's it's there and one step away from buying rather than three steps away, like in their bank accounts, right? So mm -hmm. Tether's looking good. Uh, and I'm, I would surmise that most of those are on Binance, things like that, where we do have most of the largest exchange addresses. USD coin is gonna be more um, revolved around Coinbase because it's their native stable coin. Uh, and that's been more up and down, which is interesting to see. So it's kind of a polarity between the two top stable coins right now. Mm. And and in, I guess also Tether is way larger than USDC, right? So you have more exchange support. Well, like you said, 
Coinbase is the main driver of USDC as far as exchanges. So uh, Tether is more distributed globally. Great point. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the OG stablecoin. It's been around over seven years now. So there are just by default going to be way more exchanges that disperse it and allow it as a trading pair compared mm -hmm. to USD coin. Mm. Um, let's talk a bit about altcoins. What are you seeing, um, you know, specifically for SWE? Because uh, I, I wanted to talk about that because there's been a lot of hype, a lot of talk about it. It's been performing really well from a price standpoint. Yeah, I see something really interesting going on with SWE right now. So this is the ratio of positive versus negative comments across social media on X, Reddit, Telegram, 4chan, and even on Bitcoin Talk. And SWE has been obviously one of the best performers, especially since the crash back in the first week of August. Um, and generally, positive sentiment spikes like this are what kind of halt rallies. You can see how it kind of halted this upswing and then it kind of flattened out for a few days. Same thing here. It actually went down right after this big positive sentiment spike. Here it topped out about two days later, which is interesting. Sometimes there's a bit of a delayed effect. Um, but all of a sudden, we're seeing the most negative sentiment in the past 24 hours that we've seen in Sui's recent history. Uh, more than double the amount of bearish comments compared to bullish comments across social media right now. I'm not quite sure what's causing that, but whatever the case, if I zoom in here a little more and, and really look at it with a magnifying glass, uh, we'll just go like one hour candles. Mm. A mm, little, little more than that. We'll go like four. So big top signal here. And then all of a sudden, it's very bottomy. Um, and if I add the extra 24 hours here, it's, it's starting to get back a little bit positive. But this was the time to buy, like right when the crowd went bearish on it. Mm -hmm. It seems as though SWE finally made a turn. So people were like, all right, SWE's rally is over. I'm selling, I'm no longer bullish on it. I think it's a scam coin, whatever the heck they're saying, it's causing this bearish signal uh, or, or uh, marking that the crowd has become bearish. Therefore, it's a bullish signal. And then the price immediately starts bouncing again. It's just like clockwork how this works with so many different assets. Mm. Wow. Um, that's fascinating. And it's so cool. I, I haven't seen this before in sentiment where you can uh, put the sentiment with the candles. I need you to show me how to access this. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Yeah. I'll, I'll even drop a link so you can share it on this video. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Um, let's talk meme coins. How are those performing? Uh, certainly at the beginning of this year, there was a lot of movement, but it seems to have died down. Yeah. So I like to take a look at how meme coins are being discussed compared to layer ones and twos. And generally, it's kind of a top signal if we see meme coins on the rise in discussion rate. And that's actually exactly what we're seeing right now. So we're not all just bullish and euphoric right now about the prices. We might still see 70K Bitcoin in the next, who knows, 24 hours from this call. But one of the warning signs is the fact that meme coin hype is at its highest level right now since may uh we're talking about about like maybe five months since we've seen such a high percentage of overall discussions related to the top six meme coins so this is basically taking a look at the combined discussion rates of doge shiba inu pepe whiff bonk floki and when this gets high, we get concerned because it's a, a greed sign, a, a signal that overall the crowd is trying to maximize their gains because they think Bitcoin is going to continue going up, therefore pushing Doge and all these other coins up three times as fast. So they're trying to buy into these right now. Mm. Yeah, my hope is this cools down to your point because <laughs> it is a top signal, a greed signal, right? Um and I hope that Bitcoin's dominance continues to rise where alts bleed a little bit or they stay steady and Bitcoin does its run up uh, and then maybe the liquidity flows down to L1s and L2s and memes come in last, but that's my bias. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I mean, regard, even if you're into meme coins, you're, you should be rooting for others to not be so hyped about meme coins. 
if that mm -hmm. makes sense, because you want to be the contrarian who's buying into the speculative risky assets when everyone else is viewing them as risky. Um, mm -hmm. And so like at the expense of all this meme coin hype, L2s in particular are getting really ignored. So like assets like Matic, uh, I'm, why am I forgetting what MNT is? MNT is uh, Mantle, Arbitrum, uh, Immutable X, Optimism, and Stark. These coins are basically not being talked about at all in comparison to the meme coins right now. So mm -hmm. they could be the sneaky pick if Bitcoin continues to at least stay afloat as to where it is right now. Mm. Um, earlier, you highlighted that Aptos was one of the top performers uh, recently as well. Can we take a, some, a look at some of the sentiment around that? Yeah, let's look at that same chart we checked out for SWE really quick. Yeah, because we'll there thinking. was a lot of news and like hype around Aptos. I think I don't know. I think some they did something. I don't know some announcement. Yeah, I saw something as well. I'm not sure what it was, and I don't want to speculate on this call without doing some research on that. But I will say that Aptos has been seeing some positive spikes. Mm. Uh, they're not extreme. This was huge, which is interesting, and it did end up causing at least a little bit of a top. But mm. overall, the sentiment has been fairly, fairly positive, it seems. Um, I'm not going to go too crazy and say that this is, this is too bullish, but it, it certainly seems like the crowd has latched onto it. Uh, and there's a little FOMO going on. But mm. I want to check something else out for Aptos as well. So if we go down to social volume and dominance, yeah. So this might be the best signal for Aptos right now. It's these dominance spikes that are very close to tops every time they happen. You can mm. see it here and here. When the crowd starts talking about it a lot, that's when we see our tops. This even back here in May was a great top signal as well. Um, so there's some moderate FOMO going on. Not enough for me to be like super concerned if I just look at like the overall volume right now. Sure. Yeah, I mean, look at these volume spikes. People were really, really buying into it heavily after this huge jump here. Mm. Um, if you don't mind, one last coin. If we can look at XRP, and the reason being there's been uh, some SEC news. There were some XRP ETF filings happening over the past couple of weeks. So there's been a lot of... Uh, and then Ripple had its swell conference. So I'm curious what's happening on that front. Yeah, in terms of volume, it's pretty low at the moment. It doesn't look like people are latching on to XRP because of this news at any special rate. Mm. Uh, active addresses, fairly low, nothing special going on. I actually like to see that the average returns are underwater, both on the short-term end and long-term end, um, when the 30-day returns are at like below negative 5%, that means buying into it or adding onto your position would be doing so at a lower risk time than usual. Mm -hmm. uh, so both of these are negative, and that means you'd be a contrarian if you're buying in now, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I do see a little bit of an, uh, a longing bias going on on BitMEX. It's not that crazy, but just something to keep in mind. Maybe people are opening up some minor leveraged and margin positions right now. Whale transactions, nothing too crazy there. Mm. Um, if we look at some of the larger wallets for accumulation signs, now nah, they're, they're being pretty flat at the time. Dormant movement, nothing too crazy. Supply and exchanges has been moving down. Not a lot of discussion. So even though we saw this back at the turn of the month on October 2nd, this big hype spike, mm. this actually looks like it might have been related to the crash of XRP back here. And then prices have kind of ri risen ever since. So if the spikes happen in social dominance, as the price rises, as it did here, perfect top signal. If it happens right after it falls, it's a perfect bottom signal. These are like two perfect illustrations of how we look at social dominance. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> it looks kind of textbook. You have these twin towers there, right? And with a price doing different things. 
Totally. I just removed the blue bars, so it's a little, little easier to see. But just to drive this point home, huge green bars right here, right? And then right after the green bars, hey, let's all talk about XRP. It looks like a great investment all of a sudden. Oh, whoops, <laughs> we bought at the top. Oh, wait, XRP is a terrible investment now because it just crashed. Oh, whoops, now it's starting to rebound. So it's just a great reflection of how the crowd typically gets it wrong. Mm. Wow. Brian, great insights. I love it, man. Thank you so much. And uh, I, I hope that, you know, when we meet in two weeks again, uh, you know, Bitcoin's maybe at a new all time high. <laughs> Fingers crossed. I think that would be a lot of fun. And we'll certainly have a ton of things to talk about if and when that happens.